Uh, good morning, everybody. So I'm going to do the first uh, presentation um, in our series called Doorways to Prayer. Uh, before I get into my practice, so I wanted us to kind of focus on prayer. So I'm going to ask you just to reflect on something. When I say the word prayer, what word or phrase has come to your mind? Just take a few seconds. Quiet. Quiet, thank you. Uh, you don't have to share out loud, but if anyone does want to, that you can say, a couple of you can say things. Praying hands. Oh, praying hands, okay, quiet. <coughs> so I'm imagining that a lot of you are thinking of the same things, but then probably you're also thinking about different things. So what, I, what that says to me is that there really is no right or wrong to prayer. Um, I was really fascinated by um, the comment that was put in the e-newsletter, I don't know if everybody read it, but I'm going to say it, about Reverend Gage cited somebody um, who did, tried to define what prayer was, and it was, prayer is a dialogue where God starts the conversation. And I was like, really fascinated by that, and I've been pondering it ever since, because I'm like, really? I don't start the conversation? Oh, okay. So maybe these next few weeks we can get some clarity on that. I'm hoping I will. So to get into the practice, I'm going to be talking about Lectio Divina. Lectio Divina, in short, is Latin for sacred or divine reading. Lectio being reading, uh, Divina, of course, being divine or sacred. Um, I like this practice, and I have been trying to, I have been doing it, practicing it, um, for a bit now. It's kind of one of my goals for this year, is to develop a better prayer practice, and I've been using this to open the door for me. I like it because it's really simple. It's also structured, but it leads, um, to some openness as well, and it's never the same, um, so when, every time you do it, it maybe is a little bit different. Uh, Lectio Divina is going to start with a passage, a scripture passage of your choice. Um, that's going to be part of your journey, I think, is to try and decide what passage you want to read. Maybe some of you have, have some like, favorite things that you like to read. Maybe some of you want to explore something that you have never tried. Um, I've been using the daily, <laughs> prayer, the daily prayer offices because there's a set of readings for every day in that book, and I'm just looking at it and picking one that seems like I like. So you want to read more than a verse, but not a really long portion either, so maybe just a few verses that kind of fit together into one thought, so that's a good one to choose. So once you choose your prayer, or your, your passage, then the first step is going to be just to read it. So read it, kind of get an understanding of what it's saying, maybe what Everybody can kind of think it's saying. And then you can go back and sort of think about maybe some words or phrases that um, spoke to you. Kind of think about those. So after you read it, then you can reflect on it. When you reflect, you might go back and read it again. Or you might think about those special words. Um, you might uh, dig deeper. And then you want to think about how does that really... Um, what is the saying for me today or for my life? Because to kind of make that link to the present. So you've read it and you've reflected. And the next step then is going to be to respond. So this is when we have that dialogue with God that God started. Um, and so when you pray, I mean, you say, what am I supposed to pray about? So lots of different ways you could approach this. And, these are not just the only way, for sure. You have ways, too. But some of the things you could do, um, you might be moved to give thanks for something or to give praise for something. Um, <coughs> something might strike you from that, um, that where you want to pray for something or something, something or someone that comes to mind when you read that. You know, or maybe you, want, you feel called to action, so you kind of want to ask, how can I live this. Or maybe you're completely confused, you have no response. So then you maybe just want to um, own that, own your confusion and, and ask God to be with you in your confusion. You can do all those things. 
and a lot more. So after you've done read it and reflected and responded through prayer, then the last thing you're going to do is rest. So I didn't say this, but you probably need to be doing this kind of in a quiet place where there's not a lot of distractions. And you could um, maybe just um, rest your mind as well as your body while you're in this resting in, on this resting part of it. Um, just be there, be present in God with God. Um, this is kind of where for me, I think the practice is going to help me because um, it's hard to just sit there and, and rest, rest your mind and rest everything. It really is hard. And um, also maybe patience comes into it um, because we're used to getting a quick text, you know, a response from people and things. That's not going to happen with God. Um, but because when I'm resting and doing this, I'm maybe going to be open to hearing or seeing or experiencing maybe a response from God. It might not happen right then. It's going to happen on God's timetable, but I'm going to be open to that. Um, this is a really important step, I think, because it's going to, um, for me, it helps put me in a state of peace and wonderment um, as I go into the world. So if I'm going out this way, I feel like I'm going to be better for God and I'm going to be better able to discern what God wants from me. So I encourage you all to try this practice. I would love to hear from you how it went if you do try it. And if you have any questions about it, we're all going to be available afterwards. You can talk with us more about it or talk with each other. Um, I hope maybe you will find, as I have, that like, I kind of look forward to my lucky or the time now on the days that I'm doing it. So, thank you.